Hello there, person. Lots of stuff added to the game. Wraith Binder, let's check out what it is. Um, got my little change log open here so I can refresh my memory on what's been new this week. Uh, the first thing is um, this new item called uh, the Slasher. It adds critical hits. So um, it's a critical chance and a critical multiplier. I'll go over here to this chest and open it up and we'll get this. We got Slasher. And uh, you got uh, also, um, you notice there uh, when you get an item, it shows you in big text what the item is. And it also um, tells you what the item does. So there's a subtext which kind of explains what that, the name of that item means. Because I noticed when, um, when I saw the name Slasher, I'm like, what the heck does that mean? Uh, you know, so it's nice to be able to see what it does and you can see these I'm some of these I'm doing minus two and some of these I'm doing minus four and with an exclamation point those minus four with an exclamation points are when the critical hit is actually happening so um, There's several things implemented there to get that all to work one was creating the slasher item the other was actually implementing the um, the mechanics for the slap the critical chance um, which is neat because now that I've got that critical chance implemented, I can do a lot of other items too. And in fact, I went and stubbed out a whole bunch of items. Um, let's look at some of those. Uh, oh, in my common.txt, we've got a list of all the new items. Look at all these new items that we got. The blue vampire that will steal hit uh, matter points. Um, haven't implemented any of most of these things yet, but I've, I've just basically done the stubs for them, which will make my work much faster because I did all these text files and all of the uh, the models started you know I just started all the models for these two like it's just they're just little like um, spheres for now but uh, they uh, will eventually turn into some nice art uh, but it's just so it'll be make going and creating all these items a lot faster in fact some of these items are so simple I could actually create them in literally like five minutes um, like like the blue vampire stealing matter points now I have all the systems implemented for all this kind of stuff all you gotta do is kinda hook it up uh, so there's the damager which will increase your physical and magical damage there's this the disabler this one will be fun this is a debuff item where um, you will actually not be able to use any of your abilities for a little while uh, there's the disguiser which will change you into looking like someone else uh, the EXP booster is already implemented. The firestorm is going to be needed. It's going to rain down fire. And um, we already got the minifier, which turns you into a tiny little gnome or a tiny person. Um, then there's the protector, which will increase your physical and magical armor. The quickener, which will make... Uh, what is the quickener supposed to be again? Oh, the quickener actually increases your attack speed and your move speed, both of, both of your speeds. Um, the red vampire steals hit points. The reflector reflects physical and magical damage. The rejuvenator is already implemented. It increases your matter points uh, for a while. It's just like an MP regen. Replenisher, same thing, hit point regen. Scrambler is going to scramble up your controls, so pressing left will, press, will move you in a different direction than you're used to. Slasher... We already just uh, showed, which it's that increases your critical chance. Snowstorm is going to rain down ice. Stunner, which will stun enemies for a while. Taunter, which will attract creeps to you. And Thunderstorm, which rains down lightning. So all those are going to be uh, really fun things to add to the chest. And another thing about this is that the chest is in a much more accessible place. Uh, I got to play the game with my friends this weekend over the Super Bowl weekend when visited some friends got to play some rape binder and I um, noticed uh, one of the things noticed uh, for playing with them was that it was really these uh, chests were really inaccessible you had to you had to actually build a bridge to get over to them um, last week so this week I went and made them so you've got this little path over here it's still not like super directly accessible like you're not just gonna run straight there right you have to like run over to this part of the map and then over here to get to them um, but it makes it so that uh, a new player that doesn't really understand how to build stuff can get to those chests and the same thing with the bots too the bots aren't really that smart yet about what they create so they um, they're it's just so much more fun to have them go and open chests in fact Let's go and uh, this is fun actually to watch the bots use the chest. Uh, that's another new thing too. I got the bots so they actually use the chest. Before, I didn't know that the bots couldn't use the chest. I thought they could. 
uh, but um, they weren't actually, they would go to the chest and not open it. Sometimes they would open it, but it would, um, they wouldn't pick up the item. They'd be just like, uh, what's that? Oh, he didn't go for the item that time. Let's speed up a little bit, see if he goes and gets for that item. In fact, oh shoot, we can go over here and watch this item too. Watch two items. Yeah, I don't know if we're gonna get him using a chest here. Oh wait, no, there we go. Right side of the, oh, he missed it. Come on, AA. Oh well. Well, it's, it's pretty neat to watch them open the chests. Uh, I had it for a minute there. They were opening chests on... What the heck's going Oh, there's a new bug I introduced. What are they looking at? They're just sitting there trying to seek each other and doing nothing. Well, got some work to do there. But it's all related to some bug fixes I created just in the last day here. Um, and I'll, I'll illustrate those right now, actually. Um, these were This is a pretty big issue... Um, when, uh, a, when a, I was noticing when I watched my friends play, I thought this was super voodoo. I'm like, what is going on? Sometimes the players would not be able to attack, um, other players. And sometimes they would not be able to attack creeps. Sometimes creeps would not be able to attack you. And I kind of, is this, this isn't really going to show actually here. This might actually kind of show what's going on here. You can see if I that if I do this something like this I go up and down no oh, it's not really you can see that there's a few few um, enemies that are attacking and not doing anything their attack is not doing anything basically we've got one of the players there is swinging their their sword or blade and it's just not hitting those creeps right there and another player is attacking me and not hitting me in that screen or the the character Russ so basically what what it, it was just a, it was a big issue I'm like gosh why can't I was watching my friends play and they weren't attacking each other like why the heck are they not attacking each other and why is this happening all of a sudden when I try and play the game with my friends and it's never happened to me in my my testing well what it turned out to be was grid issues so the way the collision system grid works is that um, it goes and um, there we go. Uh, there's a collision grid. So whenever an entity is created, uh, the inside the grid it will store that there is an entity at this point, um, and here's the entity's ID number. And what was happening was the grid was filling up, and um, I was like, and and I didn't. It took a while for me to realize like what the heck was going on, but I finally figured out that the grid was filling up, and installed some some code to, like, uh, or you know, wrote some code to to figure out when the heck that's happening and it started just narrowing it down basically found out that what was happening was there were several issues several i thought there was just one issue but one of the issues which was really really simple was um actually we can look at this code here this is all in this last commit um and that was in systems so it wasn't even clearing the grid so whenever the world changed, it wasn't clearing the grid. So like in the in the beginning, when you go to the main menu, it's actually creating a void world. It's called the void world. And then you set up your what kind of players you want and what kind of match you want to play. You start a match and it switches you to the battle world. So it was leaving behind a bunch of entities in the grid from the void world. Um, and But that wasn't really the main issue. Uh, the main issues were were several things, um, but one of the biggest ones was that an entity like the bow shot. Let's let's, let's take a look at the data for the bow shot. Whenever um, an, a player or the guardians shoot the bow, it creates this bow shot entity, and this bow shot entity has a child. So this bow shot entity has a position, render, input, and move. So it allows this bow shot to move and it draws the arrow, but the damaging entity is a child. So this child entity has a name, position, render, but more importantly, this collision and attack components allow the 
the bow shot to have a certain um, speed and movement and all that, but have a different collision and attack. So, oh, sorry, and AI. So the movement um, happens with the AI for the, the parent entity, the bow shot, and then the child entity is the damaging entity. So what was happening here was that it was creating it was creating it was putting this um, child entity into the grid when it was created and then it was trying to remove it from the grid when it was deleted but for some reason it could not erase the entity after it had moved after it had been alive for a little while and I found out that it wasn't actually moving the entity because it's a child that uses a thing called a move chain and uh, let's see on moved in the move system this is new code here um, but basically before what was happening was it would go and it would loop over all the move chains so for so for example this bow shot entity the parent entity has a list of move chains and inside its move component it has a list of entities that it's going to move whenever it moves so whenever this parent entity moves it also moves the bow shot damage entity as well and that happens right here in all this code what was happening was it was actually just assigning the position and it wasn't calling render systems on moved or collision systems on moved so what was happening is it would paint into the grid where it was created it would move the bow shot damaging entity a bunch via this chain system and then it would go and try and erase itself and be realize hey there's nothing to erase here at this point and so what it was doing is is leaving behind the inside the grid at the original position so all I really had to do was add in whenever we're moving uh, a, a move chain we also need to call this collision system on move so that it can erase from the grid and um, and then add to the grid too is that how it happens here in this move grid so it basically moves the entity within the grid um, so that solved one of the issues another one of the issues was that move chains should uh, um, weren't being erased so it, like I said, the parent entity, the bow shot, has a list of chains. So when the bow shot damage was actually removed, it wasn't actually removing its ID from the chains in the move component, or in the in the, yeah in the move component. So what I had to do was add uh, into the position component. All the position components now have a chain parent. So if you if it's a child entity, it lists its uh, it lists its parent that it's chained to so that when it, a child entity is removed it can go and look at its chain parent and say hey I I'm I've been removed so go ahead and remove me from your list of of chains in fact that happens now in a a nice one single function called unchain so this is unchain and this is chain right here so in chain it goes and um, pushes back into the parents move chains and lists that child entity and then when it goes and unchains it actually goes to the child entity and looks at this chain parent and erases itself from the move chains of the chain parent so that was another issue that was causing some weirdness um, what, there was a couple other things that were you know I'm not gonna go into too much more detail on the on what all I mean it was kind of a complex issue here this is a big commit um, but yeah, just suffice it to say, the move grid is a much, much smarter now. Um, let's look at anything else that was changed here. Oh yeah, another little tiny fun thing here is that now the menus show you um, what controller you're using. This is actually pretty... I noticed while playing with my friends that we had several issues where um, we're like, who the heck has control of the menu right now? And the way Wraithbinder works right now is that... Um, when you, um, when whenever the the first player to press a button becomes player one, um, and so player one gets control of the main menu if you're um, if you're on the main menu, and if you have like four controllers connected and one of the controllers isn't working, it's because you know you didn't know why before. But now you, it's pretty clear. Now in the bottom right of this menu here, we've got player one, and it shows me that I'm using my. Um, PS5 controller and that happens on all the menus you know it's showing all those in fact if I go in here to um, to split the screen now it see it shows me that player one is this and 
Player two hasn't even joined yet, so there's no controller. But if I press my keyboard, oh no, that's not gonna work. Let's, if I connect another controller, so I'm switching here to now. I've got uh, my uh, my 8-bit dough, Super Nintendo style. Why didn't you? Oh, oh, it's having trouble connecting to the Bluetooth. Ah. Uh. It's just sitting here flashing. This happened to me the other day. This is kind of a weird issue where I have to go and disconnect and reconnect the, the controller. So I'm not going to worry about that right now. But the point is, um, you would see the controller down there in the corner, in the right corner for, for this other player. So it, it makes it clear. It would say player two. And the same thing goes for if you have four controllers. It would show the the, the controller for each player there in each, each one of those screens. So really helps clarify what the heck's going on, who the heck has control of the main menu and all that. And it even works for keyboards too. So if I go and um, use just my keyboard and I'll go to one of the menus here. <laughs> Huh. Now, now I'm running into issue. Oh, okay. It's because I think it might that might have been controller drift. I saw online that the PS5 controller has drift issues. I think that's what was going on there. It was actually thinking that the play the PS5 controller was pressing some buttons, even though it wasn't. But yeah, see so now we've got a little keyboard icon too <coughs> that can represent um, keyboard. And another fun thing, the last fun thing that I added this week was player names so um, when you go and create a new character I'm gonna go ahead and create a new character it gives you a default name it's sh it shows Lee for this one um, but you can go if I were to go cancel um, and create another new character this one's Eli so we've got a list of three letter names there's Jan that should and uh basically I got this whole list of names so it makes it fun when you go and create a new character right you've got all this it just it defaults you to having a name because it was kind of confusing how to create a name um, on that menu right now it's it could be more simple because what the way it happens is you you press left and right to change um, each letter which is which is not that apparent for most um, for most players so that's nice to have these three letter names and also what's nice is it can randomly whenever it's randomly creating characters like sometimes you don't have enough players created in your uh, in your main menu so when you go and uh play a match with bots um it would use random letters for names and it just didn't it didn't seem right at all so this is neat because it can go and use this random lit it can choose a random name from this list to name the this this temporary bot character and it makes it kind of fun because then you then it makes each of one of the bots unique. So there you have it. That's what's new with Wraith Binder. Um, and uh, what I'm working on next is going to be more items and just more fun elements like this. So thanks for watching this video, and we'll catch you next time.